Hi everyone, I'm Farida and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have a video on multiple choice questions on imaging of paranasal sinus disease. So let's begin with the first question. Which one of the followings describe the silent sinus syndrome on the X-ray imaging? A. Superior displacement of the orbital floor. B. Asymmetry in the size of the right and left maxillary sinuses. C. Outward bowing of the maxillary sinus wall. D. Decreased size of the orbit. So let's talk about the silent sinus syndrome. It's a rare pathologic condition. We have an obstruction of the ostome or the opening of the involved maxillary sinus. So the maxillary sinus has a chronic sinusitis and that's uh, the um, obstruction of the ostome is causing a hypoventilation and eventually leading to a decrease in the size of the sinus with inward bowing of the sinus walls. So we have an asymmetry in the size of the left and right maxillary sinuses, reducing the sinus size, and we have an inferior displacement of the orbital floor with increased orbital content. And so the silent sinus syndrome is associated with clinical symptoms such as anophthalmos and hypoglose. So let's see the question again. Describing the silent sinus syndrome on x-ray, A is incorrect because we have an inferior displacement of the orbital floor. B is correct because we have an asymmetry due to the size reduction and C is incorrect uh, because we have an inward bowing of the walls not an outward bowing and D is incorrect due to the inferior displacement of the orbital floor the orbital content increased okay question number two which of the radiographic changes may persist after the treatment of the chronic sinusitis a surface of liquid and air B. Accumulation of the secretion. C. Increase in the mucosal thickening. D. Sclerosis of the sinuses wall. So let's talk about the chronic maxillary sinusitis. That is an infection when an acute infection fails to resolve by 12 weeks. So what we see on x-ray is we have a mucosal thickening causing blockage of the sinus ostome and resulting in accumulation of secretion. And on the image, we have increasing in the radio opacity inside the sinus. In chronic sinusitis, because of the persistent inflammation, the sinus perisom on the wall of the sinus, on the bony wall, is stimulated and the osteoblasts in the bone respond to the inflammatory mediators and may result sclerosis and thickening of the bony walls. So we have mucosal thickening, we have increasing in the inside radio opacity, and we have sclerosing and thickening in the bony walls. So after the treatment of the chronic sinusitis on the image, we have a gradual increase in the radiolucency of the sinus. So the sinus becomes much more clear. And we have a small clear area inside the sinus and the mucosal thickening starts to shrink and <clears throat> becomes invisible and the sinus returns to its normal appearance. But in chronic sinusitis, the changes in the sinus wall may be persist. So let's see the question. A, B, and C is incorrect because after the treatment, the liquid air surface, the secretion accumulation, and the mucosal thickening all are reduced and can become invisible. But the sclerosis of the sinus wall can be persistent. Okay, question number three. 
In X-ray imaging, which one of the followings helps to differentiate between the sinus discharge and the mucosal thickening in acute sinusitis? A. Degree of opacity. B. Thickness of the opacity. C. The shape of the discharge. D. Sclerosis of the sinus wall. So, let's talk about the difference between the sinus discharge and the mucosa thickening that we see in acute sinusitis. Thickened sinus mucosa is seen as a radiopaque ribbon of soft tissue that's parallel to the contour of the maxillary sinus floor. So the thickened mucosa is uh, detectable on an imaging as a well-defined non-corticated radiopaque band of soft tissue density that follows the contour of the bony wall of the sinus. An air fluid level resulting from the accumulation of the secretions may also be presensed and the fluid appears to be radiopaque and the border between the radioplaque fluid and uh, the radiolucent air in the antrum or inside the sinus is a horizontal and straight and a meniscus may be seen in the periphery where the fluid meets the sinus wall because the opacity of excites blood and alter mucosa are similar the differentiation between the shape and distribution can be helpful for us So let's answer the question. Uh, differentiation between the sinus discharge and the mucosal thickening. A is incorrect because the degree of opacity, both of them are radiopaque. And B is incorrect because the thickness of the opacity is not something that's important for us for uh, differentiating between the discharge and the thickening. And C is correct because the shape of the discharge and the mucosa thickening are different because we said that the mucosa thickening can have a ribbon-like appearance. And D is incorrect too because where uh, the sclerosis happens inside the sinus walls and it's different from the sinus discharge and the mucosa thickening. Okay, that's all for today. So if you enjoy these types of videos, please give me a feedback and we'll have questions and answer videos. Hope it would be helpful for your exams. Thank you all for your support and subscribe to my channel. Please give it a thumbs up and have a nice day.